so much interest in the sharing economy, it really captured people's imagination about six, seven years ago. Uh, think back to the time of the recession, and, and there was so much uh, concern about where the growth was going to be and what was the next big advantage or industry. And out of that came this idea of sharing. And some of it was so simple, you know, the idea of a power drill. You know, we, we all own power drills in our homes. Um, in the U.S., we maybe spend $30, $40 for a power drill. And over the lifetime of that power drill, I probably would use it about 12 to 15 minutes. Do I really need to own a power drill for a few holes over the lifetime of that drill? And so the idea of the sharing economy was creating a compelling way for people in neighborhoods, in communities, to be able to share a lawnmower, a power drill, a vacuum cleaner, a pressure washer, uh, and not have to own that. And that was the original idea. So you roll forward to 2016, and many now are disappointed with how the sharing economy has actually evolved. Many, many of the startups that came out in 2009, 10, 11, around this idea of sharing consumer goods and, and consumer assets have disappeared. They've failed. Um, what has come in their place are another set of companies that we often refer to as sharing economy, Uber, Lyft, Airbnb. They're slightly different, and they look much more like big business than maybe this utopian idea of sharing a power drill in your neighborhood. But they have, in fact, unlocked a whole new industry around the world. Uh, sometimes people call it the gig economy, uh, the idea that I work for short periods of time on little jobs. I'm still using my assets, a car, a house, an apartment, um, but I'm doing that uh, enabled through a sophisticated app that allows me to join a very dynamic marketplace. So many of us that watch the, the space called the sharing economy now think that the business applications may be much bigger than the consumer applications. That is, businesses often have the same problem that you and I have with that power drill. That is, they own expensive assets uh, in the supply chain. Those are warehouses, they're trucks, uh, all kinds of transport equipment. And uh, for many companies, they may not really get high utilization out of that warehouse. And so is there a way for them to be able to share that uh, and share that in a way that uh, they profit from owning it, but others can buy space, for example, in the warehouse, literally by the drink, we call it. That is uh, simply for a short period of time, a short use, uh, very much like you might do uh, with a, a ride on Lyft. But there are many other interesting applications now evolving. For example, in healthcare, which is an area of my own research, we now see uh, this idea coming of sharing medical equipment between hospitals. And for example, in the US, there's a startup company called Cohelo, which really makes a business by creating a market for equipment that hospitals can share. So not every hospital needs that special, special surgical device or x-ray or imaging device. Uh, maybe we have one of those in our city, and it is shared uh, in a way that we all benefit from that. Uh, but there's a market that's made, and the owner of that asset is able to monetize the value of that. So over time, we really could imagine that many asset-intensive industries uh, could benefit by some form of the sharing economy, this ability to share expensive assets. And we see this is particularly true in smaller cities, more rural areas, uh, smaller countries where uh, the assets are very expensive and maybe not highly utilized. Uh, so that if, if they can be shared across multiple players in that particular industry, suddenly they become economically viable and useful. So the exciting thing for a country like New Zealand in the sharing economy is this ability to create services and products that might not otherwise be viable uh, in that marketplace. So at one level, of course, uh, New Zealand benefits from many of the same kinds of phenomenons that any Western country is facing right now with the Ubers and Airbnbs and Lyfts. You know, we see City Hop here in Auckland to be able to rent cars. You know, those kinds of things are uh, happening everywhere. But at the business-to-business -business level, you can imagine 
the ability of a much smaller company to gain access to equipment or infrastructure that they wouldn't normally have. So for example, if you're a small uh, company in Auckland that uh, is building a supply chain, rather than having to make long-term leases on a warehouse, which would be expensive and risky, if I could buy uh, little bits of space uh, through the sharing economy in a warehouse, it allows me to much more quickly come to market with products that I might not otherwise be able to do. So the exciting thing for New Zealand is we have a very dynamic economy here of small and medium businesses. And the sharing economy, what we might call a sharing economy, really allows those businesses to tap into infrastructure, grow much more quickly, enter new markets. It really is in many ways perfectly suited for those SMEs to be able to jump in quickly and uh, gain traction in a market.